We are so glad to have Joanne Knight back with us today, and she is going to do some more work on the Barn Chicks quilt. Yes. And you did that beautiful border last time. We were so excited to see that. It was fun. And now we're going to do an inside border and one of the blocks. So, yes, we are. And thank you for coming. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. So let's get started on this. Okay, Joanne, um, we worked on this last time, so show us what we're going to do today on this cute quilt. Okay, with Creative Studio in version 6, we have a much easier way to place borders. And where we use the wedge ones here, we're going to use the technique called apply in version 6 to place these cute little chicken eggs in this inside border. And then we're going to use mirror to place the two chickens because they have to be exactly in the same spot in these two setting blocks. Okay. So we're going to do that. I need to first define a boundary on this quilt. So I'm going to use my keypad and I'm going to click my boundary tool. I don't have to be quite as accurate on this one. I just want a good visual of where those eggs need to stay. So I'm clicking along this inner border all the way to the edge, along this side of the black border. These patterns are going to be placed with apply, not pattern to boundary. All the way back to this side and stop. So now I have my boundary and I am going to use a new technique in Creative Studio version 6 and it's called apply. If you look at this computer screen and you look at the start and end of this little egg pattern by Christy Dillon, it starts and ends in the center. So when we do our point to point line inside our boundary, we need to click the center because we're going to use the apply tool, which is a new tool for Creative Studio. And we're going to easily put those eggs in the number of repeats to be able to fill up this inner border. We're going to place a point to point line. So I'm going to mode over to my target, hit my select button. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to go from this side of my little red border all the way to this side. Hit stop on my keypad and shift and exit is the way that you exit from the keypad. I already have my pattern size correctly. So, Linda, if you will select that point-to-point -point line for me that I just got through drawing. There you go. And if you'll go over to the little paintbrush, because my eggs are selected, and left-click on that paintbrush, don't blink. It's going to apply those chicken egg patterns right there on top of that line. Our original line is still selected. So, Linda, if you would please hit the delete key on the keyboard and it deletes that. And now we can adjust our little eggs because they're still individual patterns any way that we need to and they're ready to quilt. All of those patterns are in the border the way that I want them to be. I'm just going to mode over to quilt from my keypad. Creative Studio is going to go to the start of that pattern. Pull up my bobbin thread and hit OK. And it's going to quilt all of those little eggs exactly inside that sashing. So cute. And they are all connected, so they are going to sew continuously from beginning to end, so I have no stops and starts on this little red border. Just 
and there's very little backtracking and with a ply, you can place it in there and it just fits just like you need it to. Mm -hmm. Such an easy way to apply a border pattern in there. Certainly went with the theme of this quilt too. Yes, it Perfect did. Perfect for this. Awesome. All done. All right. Okay, the next thing that we wanted to do on this little quilt is we wanted to place these chickens on the quilt. And this is done with the Statler. This is red work with the Statler. So I want to quilt this chicken and I want it to be in exactly the same position on this side of the quilt. So I want to use mirror to do that because it's a more accurate way to place those patterns. Mirror works from the computer screen. So because I have a center in this quilt, it's gonna be very easy for me to put a point to point line here to be able to place that chicken on the left side. And I'll show you the reason why. If we look at our computer screen where we have placed our first chicken, everything else on the computer screen is blank. So because everything else on the computer screen is blank, we have no reference of what the center is on that quilt. So we're gonna use our point to point line and we're gonna draw a point to point line with the head of the machine exactly in the center of the area that we want the other chicken to be mirrored. So let me mow over with the head of my machine. Let me mow back over to point to point and this time I have it on point to point line. And I am going to click the first click and click the second click and then stop. Shift is my upper right Exit is my lower right, and I now have a reference on this computer screen of where I need to click my mirror. So now I can walk over to the computer and I can place this other chicken. Okay, now that we're at our computer screen, we have to select our first little chicken. And we're gonna go right over here to this little icon on our right side. We can also access it with the right click of the mouse, but we're gonna left click on that and we're just gonna follow what the computer screen tells us to do. I'm gonna left click on the bottom of my little line that I drew and I'm gonna left click on the second point and now you see that I have my other chicken placed on the screen. The reason that he is toggled as sewn is because this original pattern was toggled as sewn. I can now take this line, hit delete on my keyboard, and this chicken is ready to quilt in exactly the same position as the first one. I can really see how useful that mirror thing will be. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm excited to try that and use that. Absolutely. And I find that I don't really get it until I actually try it, and then I get so excited about it. Because it places that pattern just find the center of the mm -hmm. area and it's going to place that pattern exactly, exactly where you need where it to need be. It. Awesome. And it's already sized correctly. Yeah. How easy it's is got, that? Well, I think it's easy. That sounds good to me. So you're going to do this block for us now with the red work and then show us what you do over it. I am. We're okay. going to put a rooster in the center of this block right here and we're going to do it as red work Statler. Okay. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do this cross hatching pattern over it to show how easy it is to put that pattern over that. The first thing that we wanna do is make a boundary of this area because we need to know where that's going, that pattern is gonna go in. So I am going to start with my boundary. Boundaries can be as many clicks as you need them to be depending on how crooked your block is. All the way across the top down the side, hit stop, mode over twice, hit select, and there's my rooster right there in that block placed like he needs to be. I can always adjust him if I want to, but he looks pretty good to me, so let's just quilt him out. I'm doing it in red thread because this is going to mimic hand red work. 
That's a pretty thread. What kind of thread is that, Joanne? That's so fine. That is my thread of choice is so fine. I really like the way that it works on the quilt. And so that's the thread that I'm going to use. And that's Superior's, right? That is Superior. Okay. This pattern is Elvis by Tammy Oberlin. And since we had so many chickens on the quilt and hens on the quilt, I thought maybe we wanted to put a rooster in the middle. Then we're going to go back and we're going to use Superior So Fine Thread to quilt over the top of him in a white thread so that it is not going to interfere with our red work on our rooster. Because when you do something that's applique or you do something with red work, you really need to hold that down and that center down. So using that really fine thread is going to allow us to hold that center down but still be able to see our rooster. He's got a little bit of character to him. What I find is most people who have Statlers um, love to just stand there and watch and kind of help, you know, make sure that it's going in exactly the right place. Go, make sure it goes like it goes and then you just let it do its thing. All done. All finished. Now we're going to change threads so that we can put the white cross hatching on top of it and hold down these areas of negative space. We have our rooster all quilted out and we still have our boundary right here. Our next pattern is selected, so I am simply going to mode over on my keypad to pattern to boundary and I'm going to select it and it's going to throw that pattern up on the screen. It's a real pretty cross hatch pattern by Joyce Lundergan and I am now going to go over to the computer screen and I'm going to adjust a little bit more with F10 anchors because F10 anchors go from the center out and it's perfectly placed in the center. When I select my pattern and I use the orange anchors, orange anchors are center anchors and that means that it is going to adjust from the center out. I am looking at my boundary lines. I can change to F9 anchors and pull this side a little bit farther out pull this side a little bit farther out and put that pattern exactly the place that I need it to be. It looks pretty good to me and I think I can live with that. So now I'm going to quilt it. Nice, neat little circles. And this is going to hold down the pattern, the block, and hold down the rooster without really interfering with the red work in the rooster because I'm using this really fine thread. So you don't have to be afraid to quilt over something 
that has some kind of red work on it or some kind of embroidery on it if you use the correct thread to do that. I like the fact that this pattern does the outside circles first because that stabilizes the block and once it gets through sewing the outside circles, it's going to go back in and it's going to sew the cross hatching across the middle. So everything is nice and stabilized on the outside edges. Just like with those borders that we did in the other segment, those piano key borders, you don't really want to lean on a crosshatch pattern. You want it just to sew out so that all of those lines are nice and straight and stabilizing the inside of that block. There are a couple of these lines in this pattern that backtrack over themselves, but that is the precision of Statler that it does that absolutely perfectly. All finished with that one, Miss Linda. I am so glad you showed us that because so many people would be afraid to go over that red work. Absolutely, and I've done this on vintage linens mm -hmm. where I have quilted vintage linens and on red work, and it just works out perfectly. It looks fantastic. So. That was a wonderful segment, and we have one more segment. You're going to help us finish this, right? We have one more Actually, segment, you're going to <laughs> but I would really be honored if you would do some freehand on my star blocks. I'll let you do the freehand because you're the master at that, and then I'll show you how I would place those backgrounds using the Statler. Okay. Teamwork. Right. That sounds like a good deal, so be sure to join us next time. We are so happy and fortunate to have Joanne Knight back with us Thank again. You. And we're working on the cute chicks, barnyard, barn chicks. Barn chicks. Barn chicks. Barn chicks. Barn chicks. They're... <laughs> I don't know what we're saying. <laughs> you don't have to worry about okay. it. Okay, <laughs> on the thing, it will ruin my teaching career. You'll have to sue us. We said that at exactly the same time. <laughs> oh no, it's because you had my shirt on. Probably. <laughs> I got Linda Taylor's nails, I got Linda Taylor's clothes. <laughs>